And now another chapter in the endless story of intrigue as it unfolds among the socially prominent families of Gary Summit. There in stately splendor, far removed from the squalid village below, they fight their petty battles over power and money. As this week's action begins, wealthy Agatha Murchfield is changing the chloroform on her butterfly collection in the trophy room. <laughs> Suddenly, the door opens and her trusted attorney, Bowden Pardue, enters. Agatha turns and speaks. Bowden, you really should buy a new necktie. That one you're wearing has a terrible gravy stain on it. Well, this isn't gravy on my necktie, Agatha. It's the picture of a shapely young woman in a bathing suit. <laughs> Perhaps you can't see it clearly because you have on your reading glasses. I suppose that could be it. I always wear this pair when I work on my butterfly collection. And I've been meaning to ask the eye doctor why they're called reading glasses when there's nothing to read on a butterfly. <laughs> Perhaps you could check that out for me, Bowden. Well, that's not really a legal matter, Agatha. <laughs> Is there anything else you call me over here to discuss? Yes, there is. I'm afraid that my spineless son, Rodney, has met with foul play. I haven't seen him in almost a week. Well, I wouldn't be alarmed. As you know, Rodney's fiancée, Pamela, has been trapped in deep snow near the top of Old Baldy ever since she was thrown from her horse two months ago. <laughs> Maybe Rodney just went up there to enjoy a few days of skiing with her. No, I'm afraid it's not that simple, Bowden. Look at this curdly printed note that came in the morning mail. Well, let me see. <clears throat> we are holding your son Rodney in a place where he can never be found if you want to see him alive withdraw nine million eight hundred thousand dollars from the bank and wait further instructions don't call the police above all don't tell your lawyer Bowden Pardue or we'll wring his scrawny neck Agatha are you sure it was wise to show me this note? well of course <laughs> What are friends for? <laughs> Look, I'm just all shaken up, thinking of poor Rodney being held by merciless kidnappers. I wonder what he must be going through at this very moment. Hell, that nine of diamonds gives me gin again, Lefty. Shuffle the cards and deal them up. Ah, my mind's not on the game, Rodney. Let me call your mother and tell her where to leave the ransom money. If she ever gets wise to this phony kidnapping you've concocted, we'll both be in big trouble. Now, stop whimpering, Lefty. You're being paid very handsomely for the risk you're taking. Gee, I, uh, I don't know about that. 150 bucks out of 9 million doesn't strike me as a very handsome payment. I ought to get at least 200. No chance, Lefty. I need that ransom to replace the cash I embezzled from the family business. My brother Caldwell may soon discover it's gone. Well, you might consider a couple of things before you turn me down. First of all, you're chained to that chair to make this look like a real kidnapping. And second, I'm pointing a loaded gun at you, just like a real kidnapper would. So uh, maybe Caldwell isn't really your biggest danger, especially if he uh, never has the books audited. Think about it, fella. I've just finished my audit of the firm's books, Caldwell, and I'm afraid I've found some serious irregularities. Okay, so uh, I didn't really spend 45 bucks to have a business lunch with Prince Charles. <laughs> that gorgeous redhead in the mailroom likes nice restaurants, too, you know. I'm not concerned with your minor indiscretions, Caldwell. Look at this check stub filled out by your brother Rodney. It's for a dozen boxes of paper clips. He claims they cost $9,800,000. Now, doesn't that make you suspicious? Only for one reason, Mr. Waternoos. And what is that? At this very moment, Rodney is supposedly being held by kidnappers. And by a strange coincidence, the ransom they're demanding is exactly $9,800,000. Will Agatha pay ransom money out of her company's treasury just so Rodney can secretly put it back into the same treasury? Can Lefty's greed to obtain something he wishes he had cause him to do something he'll wish he hadn't? And what about the mysterious redhead in the mailroom? Perhaps we'll learn more next time when we hear the bank teller say, well, I can't let you withdraw almost $10 million from the company account, Miss Agatha. It only has a current balance of $71.16. <laughs> That's next week when we resume our endless story of intrigue on Garish Summit.